beautifuls, this is Avrami here, and welcome back to Taylor Tales. Um, I got a new microphone set up and everything. I'm no longer recording, uh, through my headset. Now I got a new headset and a new microphone, thank god. Because I've been very worried since my current headset was starting to break. It's really old, I think it's about 4 or 5 years old now, I'm not too sure. So I got a new microphone, which is the Blue Yeti. Lots of working hard for, so I'm praying that the audio quality is fine and it's not on a um, stand. So if it sounds like I'm moving around, hopefully it's not like... I I'm still testing this microphone out, so bear with me. Hopefully the audio quality is a bit better now, so let's get right into it. Actually, my computer had restarted so many times, so I had to keep reloading this game. Thankfully, I did save the beginning before a chapter starts. So, you could save in this game, just not on during stories like this, which is weird. But it's fine. Anyway, who would throw away a perfectly fine umbrella? Dimitri manages to say. Alex finally sits back down next to me again and throws an arm around my shoulders. Huh, well, it's just interesting that you you <coughs> you already knew each other from before. Anyway, how anyway, funny how things worked out, right? Alex looks at me. After all, you became my girlfriend. It was probably meant to be you and me. I feel my face heat up at his romantic words, but Dimitri on the other hand merely looks at us in shock. Girlfriend says. I bashfully flutter my eyes downwards. Yes, your brother and I are dating. In this past life. His face contorts into a grimace. Oh, is all he says. Congratulations. Thanks, man, says Alex with a grin. I smile at Alex. He can be so sweet. I hope dinner with his parents will go alright. Oh my god. That was it. Save. Save this game. Yes. Uh, I can already go to chapter 2. Okay, it'll cost 550 gold. Cool. So I was gonna do the other guys right as well, but I'm just gonna stick to Dimitri so you guys can uh, play around this game for yourself to go see the other guys route. So I'm just gonna play Dimitri. Lately, I feel a little ignored by Alex. It's little things that like canceling a date because he has lots of reports to write, simply staying home to study, or because he already made plans with friends. We haven't even been together for a year, and it already feels like he doesn't want to spend as much time with me. Usually this happens when you've been together for years, not when the relationship is still fresh. Then again, Alex is my first long-term boyfriend, so I don't have much to go on. I'm still a bit inexperienced. It doesn't change the fact that I'm feeling a little bit neglected. However, today Alex invited me over to his parents' house to hang out over the weekend, watch some movies, he said. So I ring the doorbell excited to see my boyfriend again. When the door opens, it's Dimitri that greets me. He looks surprised to see me. Hello, Michiko. He greets me politely. Hey, Dimitri. I'm here for Alex, I say. Dimitri moves over to let me inside the house. Alexandra left about half an hour ago, though, he says. Oh, maybe he went to go get some snacks for the movies we're going to watch, I explain. Hoping that really is what Alex is doing. Dimitri shakes his no, I'm pretty sure he went to go see some friends. What? Are you serious? My heart drops into my stomach and I quickly take out my cell phone. I start to call Alex, nervously waiting in front of Dimitri at the front door. He's not really ditching me. See, he's the one that invited me over. The phone rings a couple of times before Alex picks up. Hmm. Yo, I hear Alex's voice, but it's hard to make out it's him because I can hear party music and party music on the background. Alex, are you are you at some club? I accuse him. Eric invited me over for the night. I couldn't really turn him down. See, his girlfriend broke up with him, so I'm cheering him up. Sorry, but I have to cancel tonight's date. He yells into the cell phone. But you asked me to come over. I'm already here. I can hear multiple people talking in the background. Some of them are women. And I can feel a jealousy well up inside of me. Oh, well... Just hang out with my brother or something. It's his birthday anyway. I gotta go. Have fun. Whoa, it's his brother's birthday and he even left. Wow. Alex hangs up and, and I stand there, just staring at the cell phone in my hands, completely emotionless. 
You know, after that point, I'll be like, you know, it's over. We're, we're done. It's not the first time he blew me off, but why does it hurt so bad to be rejected by your own boyfriend? It ran as soon as some other friend invited him over, even though he had plans with me. This sucks so much, I'm almost about to cry in front of Dimitri. Are you... alright? Dimitri asked me, noticing the painful expression I'm making. No, I don't think so. I answer honestly. Alex is partying at some club when he's supposed to be here with me. Dimitri bites his lip, as if he's trying to find the words to cheer me up, but finds it hard to say anything at all. I guess that makes two of us, he says, his voice tinged with some bitterness. My parents were supposed to throw me a birthday party, but they forgot, and they're out having their own date. Alright, Alex did mention something about Dimitri's birthday. It's your birthday today, I asked. Dimitri slowly nods his head as he puts his hands into his pockets. Turn 17 today. I take in a deep breath. I'm not going to let this get to me. This stuff with Alex. I try to put on a cheerful face in front of Dimitri. Well then, happy birthday! I congratulate him and lean in to give him a kiss on the cheek. Oh, is that normal? <laughs> Dimitri's blue eyes fly wide open as my lips make contact with his skin. When I pull back, there's a pink blush on his cheeks, and he's awkwardly avoiding my eyes. Thanks, he says nervously. I'm sorry, I don't come bearing any gifts with me or anything. Dimitri shakes his head. No, no, it's fine. I wasn't even expecting you to be here in the first place. Anyways, do you want to sit down? I nod my head. Might as well take a small break here before I head back home. Besides, I feel a little bad for Dimitri as well, who's all alone on his birthday. We both sit down on the couch and it reminds me a little bit of the first time we met each in this house. Although right now, we're sitting next to each other instead of far away, like there's an invisible force field between us. It does sound kind of rough though, your parents ditching you on your birthday. Well, seeing to you, my brother ditched you. I'm sorry for having a brother like that. I swallow my words and look down, hurt welling up inside my heart again. Not like you can help it, I say. But lately he's been blowing me off way more than often. I wonder if I did something wrong. I'm not quite sure why I'm opening up about this to Dimitri, but I feel like if I keep it all inside of me, it will spill over. Y you didn't! Dimitri suddenly exclaims. Don't blame yourself for things my brother does. He's always doing things like this. Things like what? Bernadette takes his time trying to answer me, a look of conflict gracing his face. I mean, not going through with his promises. Yeah, he always break. He he's always breaking them or forgetting them. I do recall that this is quite an, an issue with Alex. There has been a few times where he said he'd wait for me at, a coll at college until I was done to pick me up, but then was never anywhere in sight, leaving me to wait for him until they get fed up and called him. Turns out he simply forgot and started doing something else. Then there's the canceled dates, of course, like the one today. I sigh. I guess I can't expect much from Alex. The more we talk about Alex, the sadder I feel, so I try to change the subject. So. About your birthday, is there any cake? I liked, I'd, <laughs> I'd like some cake right now and then drown myself in my sorrows. My mom was supposed to bake one for me, but she forgot, he says with a sad look on his face. Wow, he makes it sound like Alex's parents are pretty awful at parenting. I never noticed this kind of behavior towards Alex though. And well, there goes my plan of drowning myself in cake. I wonder if there are any stores open this time of night, or perhaps, why don't we bake one? I suggest. If you've got all the ingredients for it, it, for it, that is. You can make cakes? Dimitri asks, his eyes are almost sparkling. I can try, I say with a chuckle. Don't expect too much from me. I've only done it a couple of times before. Making a cake would be a really good distraction for my troubles, from my troubles. Well, I really don't mind. Besides, I don't have any plans for it tonight, so I might as well cheer up Dimitri. Yeah, um, my mom is a pastry chef. I'm sure she's, she's still got all the ingredients stored away in the kitchen. Dimitri gets up from the couch, beckoning me to follow him into the kitchen. Oh, Dimitri is precious. He's so adorable. Dimitri starts opening the kitchen cabinets, looking through them one by one and gathers a bunch of flour, sugar, eggs, and other cake decoration materials. Wow, I didn't know he'd actually have all, that, all of the stuff on hand. Then again, his mother is a pastry chef. I remember Alex mentioning it once. We even visited the store together and had a cute date. I try not to think too much about Alex and give Dimitri my full attention. 
As he stands there tying an apron around his waist, I realize Dimitri is way more into this than I am. Dimitri, are you perhaps good at making cakes? He looks a bit bashful and nods his head. I've watched my mom a lot, so yes, I'm kind of good at it. Well then, here I am, being all confident about baking a cake, when Dimitri could probably wipe the floor with me in terms of skill. Might as well let him make the might as well let him take the reins. Alright, considering my experience at baking cakes is a total of two cakes in a lifetime, I think it's best if you take the lead. Why don't you teach me some tricks? Wow, you're making him make his own cake? <laughs> a suggestion seems to have hit the mark because Dimitri is grinning from ear to ear, and he quickly starts pulling out all of the utensils that we need. He walks over to me holding another apron. Oh, as long as he's excited, then I can't complain. Here, he says. Turn around, flour gets everywhere, and I don't want you to dirty your pretty clothes. Oh, I feel myself blush at the unintentional compliment on my own work. I am wearing my own clothing after all, but Dimitri doesn't know that. I turn around for him. Thanks, I actually made them. I may not be the best baker in the world, but I'm pretty good at tailoring and such. Dimitri throws the apron over my head and the fabric slowly falls around me. He uses the ends to tie it around my waist, being very careful and gentle about it. I remember. Alexer, Al, 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 Alexer, Alexander did mention you're majoring in fashion design. That's really cool. You make your own clothes. Dimitri gives one final pull on the apron and it sits snugly, sn snugly around my waist. He carefully tugs on my apron and I spin around to face him. It's kind of odd how I ended up like this, bearing an apron around my waist, helping out Dimitri baking a cake when I should have been watching movies with my boyfriend. But it canceled at the last minute, so I guess this is what I'll be doing tonight. Alright, Dimitri, lead the way, I encourage you. We start to work on getting all the dry ingri ingredients together. I cannot read today. In a bowl first, Dimitri shows me that I need to sift the flour so that it won't form any lumps and to use a food processor for grinding down the sugar into an almost powder-like substance. Dimitri is so engrossed in showing me the ropes that, I e that even I get pulled into his enthusiasm, slowly but surely forgetting about the pain in my heart. Soon enough, we're mixing the flour together with the eggs, and a small mushroom cloud springs from the bowl. I see some response, and at the same time, Dimitri yelps out loud. Wrong. Me oh, Dimitri, what's wrong? He's rubbing his eyes. Some flour got into my contacts. It's so one thing like he's in pain, I can see tears escaping from his right eye. Sorry, but I have to take them out. I'll be right back. Dimitri quickly leaves the kitchen. As I wait around for Dimitri to come back, I continue to mix the cake batter using the mixer. I hope Dimitri is okay. Getting flour in your contacts feels like it would hurt. Footsteps coming down the stairs can be heard behind me, so I turn around and see Dimitri walking back into the kitchen. He's wearing his glasses. Oh wow, that brings me back. Now he looks just like the time that time when we met four years ago. Under my gaze, Dimitri shifts uncomfortably on the spot. Starts. Uh, say his glasses suit him. Tell him this reminds you of when you first met. Number two. Oh, sorry, the way you look right now is exactly as back then. You know, during that rainy day. Dimitri gulps and his cheeks turn a bit pinkish. Oh, please don't tell me he's remembering my bra or anything. I hope not. I've changed since then, he trails off. I was only 13 back then. Right, it's still weird to think that Dimitri was actually 13. I was 17, and I thought you were my age, I chuckle. Dimitri's eyebrows lift in surprise. R really? Yeah, you looked way more mature. I feel a bit silly for mistaking your age like that. It's not silly, Dimitri mum. Now I'm the age you were when we first met. Huh. Before I can answer, Dimitri turns on the mixer and the sound of the electric motor fills the room. Flora lifts into the air once more and I quick, quietly stand there and watch him work. A little while later and we've got ourselves some cake batter and I help Dimitri pour it, pour it into the mold. After that, Dimitri puts it in the oven and all we have to do Wait. We both take off our aprons in silence and start cleaning up the kitchen a bit while the cake is baking in the oven. It fills the entire house up with a delicious aroma. It's making me hungry. I'm a bit impressed that he's able to do all this. Must be nice having a pastry chef for a mom. I'm sure she would bake their own cake every single birthday. Except for now, I guess. I do feel for I do feel for poor Dimitri that got forgotten. I wonder why that is. But I don't want to pry into the family business. Now we wait for half an hour, says Dimitri. 
eyes flicker over towards his hair again, this time even wider than before. It's got flowers sprinkled all over. I giggle at the sight. He looks kind of adorable like that. You look funny. You've got a flower in your hair, I say. Before Dimitri can say anything, I take a step closer to him to bridge the gap between us. His deep blue eyes staring at me in shock. I lift my arm to be able to run my fingers through his silky smooth hair. I ruffle it up, checking out all of the flower, which falls down like freshly fallen snow. As finishing touch, I blow on his forehead to clear it from any flower as well. There, I'll clean. Does she naturally do this? She's a natural flirt. <laughs> Demetra awkwardly adjusts his glasses, which have gone crooked as I was messing up his hair. There's an expression on his face that I can't quite read. Thanks. I grin at him in return. No problem. I'm happy that Dimitri was here today, otherwise I would have simply gone home and felt rotten for the entire night. At least now I don't have to think about Alex, instead I can enjoy eating cake with his little brother. As I wait for the cake, I talk about my dreams of starting a boutique and making my own clothes. Dimitri listens to every word I say carefully. It's nice to be able to talk to someone who listens. I mean, at college I talk to my best friend, Sarah, but it's nice to have another person that listens. Alex, while well, supportive, tends to zone out when I talk about fashion. It leaves me a little sad sometimes to not be, be able to talk about my passion in life. Eventually, the cake is ready and we both have fun decorating it before we take a slice and enjoy the fruits of our labor. We talk some more off until we're both stuffed with cake. Dimitri did a fine job baking this cake. It was perfect. Eventually, I notice it's getting late and I should probably head back home. Thanks for the cake, Dimitri. It was delicious. Mm. Hey, I can't take all the credit. You helped as well. I wouldn't really count mixing with an electric mixer. Helping. Dimitri was the one that measured all the ingredients to its exact weight and combined them all into a beautiful angel cake. Anyways, I should head home now. It's pretty late. Okay, let me walk you out. Hunter gentlemen. Dimitri leads the way out of the kitchen and into the living room. I was supposed to be watching movies on the couch right now, along with Alex, but I guess tonight had different plans. It wasn't so bad, I did have fun with Demetria as long as I stopped thinking about Alex. Um... Thank you for sticking around, Demetria says in a small whisper. I know Alexander stood you up and all, but I'm glad you kept me company because of it. At least my birthday doesn't suck completely, he's smiling up broadly. I can't help but smile back at him. He's so cute, I wish I had siblings. Well, I'm glad I was able to help out just a little. I. Anyways, have a good night, Demetria. Good night, Michiko. It says with rosy colored cheeks. I finally leave to go back to the dorms. It's adorable. Oh, it's my dorm. When I arrive at my dorm room, Sarah and my roommate isn't there yet. I'm all alone. I sign flop down in the bed. I call Alex one more time. The phone keeps ringing, but he doesn't pick up. I sigh. I guess he's simply enjoying himself with friends instead of me. I fall asleep with the cell phone in my hand. This girl is bearing a lot. Mm. The next morning, I'm woken up by a text. I regularly check the screen of my phone and see that an unknown number has sent me a text. Still half asleep, I sit up straight and open up the text. What? What is this? It's a screenshot of a conversation between Alex and someone else on a dating app? That's definitely him in the profile picture, at least. I read their conversation. Looking sexy in that dress. How about you wear it for me? You'll need to buy me a drink first. Winky face. <laughs> How about Leslie's at 6 tonight? You're lucky you're hot. Sure, I'll come. The timestamps on this conversation is from yesterday. My stomach is tied in one anxious knot as I mull this over. This is a screenshot of Alex setting up a date with some girl over a popular dating app. And I think he went to go see her last night, canceling my date with him. No way! There's just no way. This has to be fake. I quickly type in a message. Who are you? What is this? My hands are shaking as I hold my cell phone and I don't know what to do. Is this real? Is Alex really meeting up with girls? But screenshots can be fake, right? Well, technically they can if they're really into that Photoshop for that real quick little Snapchat. Oh, it's not, not Snapchat. <laughs> Snap. Sc screenshot, sorry. My mm. phone buzzes and while there's no answer to my question, the person did send another screenshot. And I immediately look away when I see its con 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 contents. There are in indecent pictures. It's Alex talking to another girl in a sexual way. He's sending naked pictures of himself to her. There's no doubt about those pictures. Those are all him. These screenshots. They're real. They're real. Holy. 
I feel like I'm going to throw up. Instead, I start to cry. Sarah wakes up from my son, sobbing. Oh, hey, Sarah. What, what's wrong with Chico? Why are you crying? Hearing her ask me why I'm crying makes me cry even harder as I realize this is not some nightmare I'm in. This is real. I showed Sarah my phone and she quickly reads it over. What the hell? Is that Alex? Seriously? Tell me it's fake, Sarah. Tell me he's not cheating on me. I beg her. Sarah is looking just as shell-shocked as I feel, but she gives me one of the hardest looks I've seen on her face. I'm sorry. I think this is real. Sarah pulls me into a hug, and I feel myself give in to my tears. Alex, what did you do? Alex done crapped up everything. That's what's going on. Wow. Can I go again? Yeah, I have enough for one more. This should, this should wrap up today's episode. And then we can actually start playing the game. And I, 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 I hope this audio is okay. Today's the day. I'm standing in front of an empty store, my boutique. Beautiful. With the help of Grandma's inherit inheritance, I suck at reading today. I was able to purchase my own store so that I could pursue my dreams after finishing up college and getting my bachelor's degree in fashion. And this is it, my own boutique. I hurry and take out my keys, open up the front door. An empty large room greets me. It's stripped of any personality, and it needs some touching up to do. Not a problem. This has been my dream since I was a little girl. Time to get to work. It's taken me some time, and along with the help of my best friend Sarah, I will finish up the boutique. <sighs> I can't believe it's finished, says Sarah as she stretches out. It looks amazing. Thanks for all your help. All of your help. I'm really grateful that Sarah also lives in the same city and helped me out. We stayed in contact after college, where Sarah majored photography. She's been a great friend so far. So what are you going to do with your spare bedroom? Sarah asks, gesturing towards an empty room down the hall. I shake my head. I don't really have any idea what to do with it. Storage, perhaps? I'm not sure. You could turn it into a cat room, become a cat lady. Sarah says to me with a smirk. I am not a cat lady, I reject. <laughs> Sarah laughs. Well, when's the last time you went on a date after you dumped that one guy, Alex? Oh, good, I dumped him instead of he dumped me. I look down. I don't know, a few months ago, perhaps, I mumble. It's a lie, though. I haven't really had a boyfriend anymore after Alex, and that was almost three years ago. Flirted here and there with some guys during college, but I feel myself wary of men now. Finding out your boyfriend has been messaging women behind your back, it really did hurt my self-esteem for a while, and it damaged my trust in men, which I know is illogical to apply to the entirety of men out there, but it is what it is. Come on, let's get out of this boutique and go have a drink in the city somewhere. Sarah suggests changing the subject. Oh, sure. Do you know anything close by? I ask, knowing Sarah knows a city more than I do. Of course, it's not too far from here. We can get there by foot. Okay, Cafe La Bella. That seems like a cute cafe. Me and Sarah are walking around exploring the city center and all of its shops. It's busy and lively. There's people walking around everywhere. I'm not used to such a crowd. People are bumping into me because it's so crowded on the sidewalk. That's when I bump into something tall and fluffy. I jerk back, flustered I walked into someone like that. Sorry, I lost my footing, footing there. What the heck? Giant cat eyes stare back at me. It's a fluffy cat costume, holding a bunch of flyers. What? It's Mew? Mew? Instead of Meow? Mew? Mew? <laughs> Mew? <laughs> no problem. Do you want to try out our delicious brownies at Mew Cafe and pet some cats? They say in a high-pitched voice. The person brandishes one of their one of the flyers. Sarah quickly grabs and breaths, tugging me away from them. Come on, Michiko. Don't get hold up by people like th these. Just ignore them. Wait, Michiko? Michiko Melody. The person questions in a much lower and regular voice. I tilt my head to the side. Yes? I answer hesitantly. Do I know you? I'm pretty sure I don't know anyone who has a job where they have to wear a cat costume. I'd never let them hear the end of it if I did. It's me. Um, Dimitri. Hmm? Dimitri? Are you trying to pick her up or what? Sarah suddenly accuses them. Is that some sort of pickup line you have ready for women who bump into your <laughs> bump into your ridiculous costume? No, because if it was a pickup line, he would have to know every single like 
female in the world. He he knew my first and last name, apparently. No! The giant cat head looks down at the pavement and as if he's embarrassed. It's too comical looking. I'm Dimitri Kotev, Alexander's younger brother, remember? Oh! I exclaim. Wow, I haven't seen Dimitri ever since that day. I think it was on his birthday, actually. Right before I found out about Alex. Once I broke up with Alex, naturally, I didn't see Dimitri anymore. I'm sorry, I didn't quite recognize you there, I say with a smile. Sarah cocks me an eyebrow. You know this guy? Yes, um, I just didn't know you had, a, had such a job like this. I gesture to his cat costume. He suddenly places both hands in front of his crotch, acting shy. D don't judge, I work at Mew Cafe and they asked me to hand out flyers. Tease him about the costume, sympathize with him. Um, I would probably tease him. I should take a picture. I start rummaging through my purse. No! He holds up his giant cat paws. I laugh at him. Sorry. I'm kidding. The costume is too funny. I'm never going to forget this. That's not how I want it I, that's not how I want to be remembered, he sighs. Come on, Michiko. As much as I like to catch up with guys wearing creepy cat costumes, I would like to get that drink now. You you can drink at Mew Cafe! <laughs> Dimitri pipes in. No thanks. Sarah immediately shoots down the idea. It didn't sound like such a bad idea, though. I don't mind talking to Dimitri a bit longer. Alright, it was nice seeing you again, Dimitri, but my friend is getting impatient. I nod the head at him, and I'm, I'm about to leave before a fluffy paw is wrapped around my wrist. The fluffy paw lets go of my wrist after noticing the strange look I was giving him, and he offers me a flyer. Um, my shift is over in two hours. You think you can drop by the cafe then, and we can catch up? A bit curious to see what has become of Alex's little brother, I nod my head and set the flyer. Sure, I'll see you then. I said with a warm smile, then wave him goodbye. Sarah gives me a disapproving look as we both walk away. Can't believe you fell for that. It's like the oldest trick in the book. Pretending they know you, so they can lure you somewhere you've never been before. Sarah, it's okay. I really do know him. Are you sure? I mean, that could have been anyone hidden beneath that outrageous costume. You don't even really know what he looks like. Sarah has a point there, but I know it's not some random stranger. It'll be Dimitri for sure. He'll just look a little bit older than the last time I saw him. It's Alex's younger brother, I say quietly. Sarah scrunches up her face. You mean that scumbag Alex? I cringe, remembering the fallout I had with my ex after I found out about his escapades with a certain dating app. Yeah, that Alex, alright. Then don't see that guy, Sarah exclaims. What? His brother, you mean? Just stay away from him, it's bad news. I don't think catching up with Alex's younger brother is bad news. It's not like he is Alex himself. I've always been on good terms with Dimitri. It's not like he's the one that cheated on me. What's the harm in talking to him for a bit? Next thing you know, Alex will be there. Then what? I admit, I feel a pang of anxiety creep up inside of me. I try to push it aside. I don't think Alex would be caught dead in a cat costume. I say with a snort. Seeing the word look in Sarah's eye, I hang my head down. I'll be careful, I tell her. I don't want to run into Alex either. Sarah shakes her head as she leads the way into the city. After me and Sarah have some drinks at a cozy cafe and listening to her ramble about Alex, we part ways. I decide to head back to the address that listed on that's listed on the flyer. Sarah still tried to get me not to go, but I almost feel like I have to talk to Dimitri. I feel it's almost a sort of closure, I guess. My relationship with Alex went really sour after I broke up with him, and he kept calling me for months afterwards, not leaving me alone. I haven't seen Dimitri since that day either, but he's just an innocent bystander, and he's always been a little, uh, been like a cute little brother to me, who now apparently works at a cute cafe, judging by the very feminine-looking flyer in my hands. A bit later, and I arrive at the cat cafe. It's late in the afternoon, so there's not as many customers there. I was going to say, why is it so quiet? Oh, Mew Cafe. When I answer, I'm immediately greeted by a cat who jumps up on my shoulder. Whoa! I shriek, stabilizing myself as well as the cat on my shoulder. It's an orange tabby, purring and meowing in my ear. I think they really want attention. I laugh and scratch their chin, which they rub against my cheek as well. This is cute. I didn't think a cat cafe would make me smile like this. The cat's nails are digging into my top, though, and I worry it's going to ruin it, so I try to chew off the cat. Hey, you're here, a voice suddenly says. Oh, he's cute. 
don't I didn't expect the picture and it's actually moving. It's blinking. Before I know it, the cat is lifted from my shoulder, and instead it's being cradled in the arms of a tall young man. Wow, he's so tall. I was a bit worried you weren't going to show up, he says with a shy smile. A dimple when he smiles immediately triggers my memories. It's definitely Dimitri. That mole is still in the same spot, underneath his right eye. With that staggering height of his, he towers over me like a true adult. Well, he is an adult now. He's like 19 here, right? That's what I think. But anyway, that's going to be it for today's episode. We are going to continue it off. And the next one, I gotta double check if my mic is recording well, and I really hope the quality is better than my headset mic, which was, it was pretty good, but the headset discontinued so I couldn't rebuy it. Great. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.